from KXXV TV. Your first choice for news with Ann Harder and Bruce Geetson, Chief Meteorologist Andy Wallace, and Sports Director Vince Erickson. This is the News 25 Night Beat. Severe weather warnings are issued for parts of Central Texas. We're glad you're with us. I'm Bruce Geetson. And I'm Ann Harder. The storms could bring us some heavy rain and hail. First, News 25 First Alert Chief Meteorologist Andy Wallace has been tracking this storm with First Alert Storm Tracker. He joins us now in our First Alert Service Weather Center. Andy? Well, Ann and Bruce, uh, beginning to be a busy night. Things just taking off really over the last couple of hours. Let me show you our severe thunderstorm watch, and that is in effect until 3 o'clock in the morning for a good ch chunk of central Texas, all except for the far west and the far southeast. And the flash flood watch has been expanded as well, and basically for a good chunk of central Texas. Take a look at our storm tracker, and uh, we'll go uh, on time lapse. The first severe thunderstorm that was in McLennan County earlier has weakened and moved its way to the northeast. Now we see other strong thunderstorms starting to develop from northwest of Waco, very close to the Crawford area. Going back to the southwest, Colleen and Fort Hood seeing some heavy thunderstorms. Same with Lampasas down toward Burnett. And then if we widen this view a little bit, uh, you can see some severe weather in Llano County. And again, all of this is moving its way to the northeast at about 35 miles per hour. Large hail will be the main threat with the stronger storms. And if I take you on future scan, which is radar out over the next 30 minutes, I want you to notice one thing. Those storms continue to intensify and move northeast and they're moving over the same areas so that flooding could definitely become a possibility. One other thing I want to show you, this is our severe weather threat. Once you get into these little blues in here, that is indicating to me the potential for some hail. So we have no severe thunderstorm warnings at this time, but we do have the severe thunderstorm and the flash flood watches. And again, any of these storms likely going to produce uh, some hail, some heavy rainfall, and some frequent lightning. We'll uh, uh, bring updates as necessary. Let's go back to the desk. Thanks, Andy. One central Texas city is trying to head a stinky problem off at the pass. The city of Waco wants to maximize the life of its landfill, but doing that may cost you. With the big story at 10, News 25's Mark Kurtz is live in the newsroom. Mark? And the city of Waco is looking at increasing its residential garbage, co garbage collection rates, but officials say spending a little now could save the city a lot of money in the future. The city of Waco's landfill on Highway 84 has been taking the trash of Central Texans for nearly 30 years. But a landfill can only hold so much. On paper, it looks as though we have about 24 to 30 years. Realistically, in the growth we've had within the city of Waco, it's looking like about 17 years. That lifespan could be greatly increased by reopening two old landfills off University Parks Drive southeast of Waco, giving new life to a place many people never really think about. It's not a real high profile part of the solid waste industry and a lot of people don't don't realize it's there, they don't notice it and all they see is the fact that they put their refuse out on the curb and, and it's picked up and it's gone. To get the ball rolling, higher garbage rates will likely be required. The Waco City Council is currently considering a dollar increase, money that could reopen one of the old landfills and transform it into a composting center for residents to use. There's been a lot of talk of how can we increase our recycling. Well, this is one way we can do it, and we can build our own compost instead of going to another county or another facility to buy the compost to bring down here. The other landfill that would reopen would take construction debris. That, along with trees and shrub, take up too much space in the current landfill. Without taking action now, that landfill could fill up, and starting a new one is almost out of the question. It can take five years to pick a new suitable site. And that's not even going forward in any of the permitting process. Now you've got to go in and you've got to do all the hearings and, and deal with all the adjoining landowners. And it is extremely difficult. If all of these space-saving measures, measures are put into effect, it's estimated that the current landfill in Waco could last another 90 years. We're live in the newsroom tonight. Mark Kurtz, News 25. Thank you, Mark. City officials say it will likely be two years before the old landfills could be up and running again. Well, as Mark told us, it may be, it may soon cost more for garbage pickup in Waco. The city's looking to raise residential garbage rates by one dollar. The increase would be spread out over two years. Right now, the rate is set at just under twelve dollars per month. The Waco City Council still has to approve the new rate. But even if you add the dollar increase to Waco's current rates, they would still be lower than other Central Texas cities. In Colleen, residents pay almost fourteen dollars a month. It's not much less in Bryan. And garbage collection in Woodway will still cost slightly more than it could in Waco.
Following up our big story from 5 and 6 today, two utility workers are thankful they're alive this evening. Earlier today, they were working in a ditch near Cameron when the dirt caved in on them. News 25's Kelly Vaden tells us about the dramatic rescue. They were trapped in an instant, but it took hours to dig them out. Two utility workers were in a ditch along Highway 36 near Cameron. They were laying water and sewer lines when the trench collapsed, burying them in heavy clay dirt. And there was uh, dirt caved in from their stomach down just about, and the dirt was still caving in on them. One victim was buried waist deep, and it took rescuers from Cameron, Temple, and Alcoa nearly an hour and a half to dig him out. But before he was taken by Statair to Scott and White Hospital, he seemed to be in good condition. And he was able to talk to us, able to move around. Uh, he was doing pretty good uh, when we pulled him out. But the rescue still wasn't over. The second victim was trapped chest deep in the dirt for nearly three and a half hours. When rescuers uncovered him, he too was conscious, talking, and could feel his legs. And EMS workers found it surprising considering the circumstances. The pressure from like chest down covered his whole entire body. Uh, the other guy was about waist down. The second victim was also taken by helicopter to Scott and White Hospital. In Milam County, Kelly Vaden, News 25. The two workers were from Ivy and Ivy, based in Gordon, Texas. They were near Cameron working on uh, laying sewer and water lines. The project is part of the widening of Highway 36. A Harker Heights fire is under investigation tonight. It happened around 7 this morning at an office at 777 Indian Trail in Harker Heights. Fire Marshal Steve Filan says the call was originally turned into police as a break-in when a passerby saw the front door open. But officials say the fire inside caused a buildup of smoke, which may have led to an explosion that blew the doors open. Investigators say the fire likely started in the back of the building where the most damage was done. The McLennan County Sheriff's Department needs your help in finding a potential witness to a homicide. Officials say the body of 40-year-old Pamela Ann Moore was found along a rural road in McLennan County on January 25th. Officials have not released an exact cause of death, but they do believe Moore was murdered. Investigators want to talk to the driver of a small tan or light brown pickup with a green driver's side door. Anyone who has seen this pickup is asked to please call the McLennan County Sheriff's Department at 254-757-5095. Family, friends, and fellow soldiers gathered today as one soldier was awarded for her service to her country. Private First Class Michelle Loftus was presented the Purple Heart in recognition of wounds she received in Iraq last July. Riding in a two-vehicle convoy near the Baghdad International Airport, Loftus and her crew came under attack by an improvised explosive device and small arms fire. Loftus received fragment injuries to her face and upper lip during that attack. And I wasn't really scared but very nervous as to how extensive the injuries were, but I was still breathing, I was still conscious, so I knew that everything would be okay. Colonel Terry Walters spoke at the ceremony and said the ceremony was a chance to recognize Loftus for her sacrifice and to officially thank her for her service. There are about 25,000 Fort Hood soldiers in Iraq right now, and Fort Hood is in the process of deploying about 15,000 more troops. Six to 7,000 soldiers have already been deployed during this second phase of deployment. And Fort Hood officials say this current deployment will continue until the middle of March. Between 500 and 1,000 Fort Hood soldiers have already made it back home. Another 100 are scheduled to return to post from Iraq on Friday. 54 Fort Hood soldiers have lost their lives in Iraq. A Midway High School student remains in serious condition tonight, suffering from bacterial meningitis. School officials were notified Monday of the diagnosis. They did not release the student's name, but did say it is a female student. Her classmates and their families were notified of the situation. No other cases have been seen, and health officials don't expect any as they view this as an isolated case. Early voting is over for the Belton ISD $32 million bond election with 1,765 votes cast. Belton school officials are anticipating 1,000 more students in the district over the next five years. Their present high school is already overcrowded. The bond would help with expansion and renovation on every campus of the district. If approved by voters, the owner of a typical $100,000 home would pay an additional $135 in taxes a year. Formal voting on the proposal to improve Belton schools will take place this Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. in the junior high East Campus foyer at 400 North Blair. 
Local Alzheimer's patients are finally getting what they've been waiting for, admittance to the new Wesley Woods Alzheimer's Care Center. Today, the first patients were admitted to their new home in Waco from a waiting list of over 300 people. Wesley Woods Alzheimer's Care Center is a new $10 million facility with 120 private rooms and a staff-to-patient ratio of 1 to 6. The new center is also doing research along with UT Southwestern Medical School in hopes of learning more about this mysterious disease. Well, more bad news for Martha Stewart today as the evidence of a cover-up mounts. And a possible break in the case of the missing girl in Florida whose abduction was captured on video. Details when the night beat returns. Closed captioning on News 25 is brought to you by Greg May Honda. Call 420-4740 for free approval. There is an arrest in the Florida missing girl case. Police in Sarasota say 37-year-old Joseph Smith, a drug felon, is in custody on other charges. Authorities think Smith could be connected to the abduction of 11-year-old Carly Bruscia. The girl's abduction was caught on a local business security tape. Sunday, police say they acted on a phone tip and they are searching the man's car as well. We continue to process um, the vehicle as well as other physical evidence in cooperation with the FBI and FDLE to try to find clues and develop physical evidence. The girl's whereabouts are still unknown. Two days after the ricin attack on Capitol Hill, lawmakers finally got some good news. The Senate office buildings closed since Monday will reopen tomorrow. So far, no one's displayed symptoms of ricin exposure, but authorities still don't know where the poison came from. And back in November, federal agents say they intercepted a package mailed to the White House containing ricin and a letter signed Fallen Angel. But a spokesman says the public wasn't told about that because the incident didn't pose a widespread health risk. The government's star witness in the Martha Stewart stock fraud trial has testified that he was pressured to help cover up the sale. Douglas Faniel testified that broker Peter Bukanovic, who's on trial with Stewart, offered him a week's vacation and a trip to Argentina to go along with the plan in 2002. Faniel says Bukanovic wanted him to support two different cover-up stories after Stewart sold her M-clone shares. Stewart could face up to 30 years in prison if convicted on all counts. NASA will begin a more detailed search for signs of water on Mars. Tomorrow, scientists say they plan to send NASA's Opportunity rover to check out a rock formation where a mineral found in water may be found. Scientists say if they can prove that water once existed on the red planet, it could mean that the planet once sustained life. Meanwhile, NASA's other rover, Spirit, is getting a complete memory overhaul. Engineers hope it will correct problems that have plagued it since it stopped sending data back to them last month. President Bush may seek a constitutional amendment barring same-sex marriages. That word comes after a Massachusetts Supreme Court ruled that civil unions aren't good enough and that same-sex marriages should be allowed. The ruling means same-sex marriages could begin taking place in Massachusetts in May. The earliest the public could vote on an amendment to overturn the ruling would be in 2006. We've had some bad weather in Central Texas tonight. Will it continue? Andy will be in to tell us when the night beat returns. And one of the offshoots from the unseasonably warm weather lately is some of us may be covering our noses more. We'll be right back. Stock Market Update has been brought to you by Bill Van Dyke Capital Management. Hi folks, Woody Woodard for Marstaller Motors, and I want you to know that at our dealership, service is a top priority, and your total satisfaction is our one and only goal. We take pride in the fact that our dealership is in the top 10% nationwide for repairs done right the first time. Our state-of-the-art body shop is second to none, and our ASC certified mechanics are the very best. What does all this mean to you? It means you can depend on the service at Marstaller. For over 50 years, a name you know, and you know you can trust. The numbers are startling. One-third of Texas high school students say they are currently smokers, and three-fourths have tried cigarettes. What's happening with the millions being spent on anti-smoking campaigns? I wish okay. I would have seen them before I even started okay. smoking. Okay. And what help is available for teens who want to quit? It's like one of the worst habits I have to kick. I can't stand smelling like cigarettes. Watch Hooked in High School, a News 25 special report beginning Thursday at 10 on the News 25 Night Beat. Three young men entered your house without permission. Yes. A home 
invasion. The three of you got into the house, is that right? Yes. What were you arrested for? Um... Think carefully, because I know. A son on a dangerous path. This isn't the first time he would have been arrested. It is not the second time. It's not the third time. And a father in denial. I really don't think he did. You are 100% wrong. Next Judge Judy. I've warned him. He doesn't listen! Weekdays at 4 on News 25. Ann's Texas Trivia on News 25 is brought to you by Discount Floors Superstore in Waco, where you get more for less. Now it's time to test your knowledge of Texas with Ann's Texas Trivia. On tonight's Texas Trivia, let's see what you know about the Texas flag. Who is known as the Betsy Ross of Texas? Jane Long, Emily West, Joanna Troutman, or Clara Driscoll? The answer is C, Joanna Troutman. When was the Lone Star flag officially adopted by Texas? 1830, 1836, 1839, or 1854? And the answer is C, 1839. The five points of the star represent the characteristics of a good citizen. Fortitude, loyalty, prudence, broad-mindedness, and what? Righteousness, craftiness, calmness or cleanliness and the answer is a righteousness on february 28th the bob bullock texas state history museum in austin will begin to host an exhibit of texas flags from 1836 to 1945 it traces the state's history through its various banners the rare flags include the handmade flag from the battle of san jacinto the texas flags exhibit runs through august 22nd First Alert 25 weather is brought to you by Hillcrest Family Health Centers. Call 202-4262 for a physician near you. And now, the most accurate and reliable forecast from First Alert 25. Well, over the last couple of hours, we've been tracking what were started off as heavy thunderstorms, became severe for a while over McLennan County, and now we've got a handful of uh, activity going on out there let's first of all look at our severe thunderstorm watch and this will be in effect until three o'clock in the morning now obviously they'll start to clear this from west to east that's why we don't really put a time on there at this point but we will have a severe thunderstorm watch for a good uh, chunk of the area and also the flash flood watch got uh, dramatically expanded to also include uh, generally all of central texas uh, through the overnight hours as this next round of activity heads our way take a look at first alert storm tracker here it is uh, really from Hillsboro back to West and Waco to Colleen to Burnett. A uh, large area of showers and thunderstorms has really intensified somewhat as it pushes itself uh, to the northeast at about 30 miles per hour. We'll go close up, uh, first of all, across uh, McLennan County from south of west over toward Waco, then back toward McGregor. We have uh, some thunderstorms going on. Go southwest from there. And it uh, looks like uh, activity around Fort Hood. And then gets a little bit heavier, especially just southeast of Killeen over toward uh, the lake. And then as we head into Burnett County, some pretty good storms as well. One other heavier core near Lampasas. Movement again is to the northeast. And if I put future scan on this, this is radar 30 minutes out. Okay, so this isn't what it is now. This is what it will be. Over the next 30 minutes, you see these storms continue to intensify, and we'll have a pretty good line of storms from eastern Burnett and western Williamson County up through Bell into McLennan County, and it looks like by that point, uh, Waco and uh, down toward the, uh, uh, oh, we'll call it Moody area, probably getting some pretty good storms at that time. The other thing I'm worried about is that flash flood watch. Here are some of the totals. You just follow your little line here. So, you know, you get the uh, greens, that's about an inch. Anything above that, you're getting one to two inches of rain, especially just southwest of the Colleen area. So that's maybe where some of the uh, flood problems may occur. We just got uh, uh, some word into the newsroom that uh, some areas of I-35, especially as you go toward the Abbott area, actually have water on the road in some areas. So easy does it. It's passable, but you don't want to drive on a road that you can't see. So be careful out there tonight. Let's take a, a wider view going to the first alert winter weather Doppler. Winter weather, speaking of which, all to our north this evening across uh, Oklahoma and Arkansas and Missouri. Our first wave of rain goes past us, and now the second line of storms has really started to take shape and will sweep across the area over the next few hours. By the middle part of the day tomorrow, this stuff should be out of here. Take a look at uh, Colleen Eagle Eye. First alert Eagle Eye out of Colleen. It is storming there. It is uh, getting ready to be uh, 
uh, rather wet again. This is about the third or fourth round of uh, storms to move through the clean area here just within the last little bit. Live current conditions look this way. It is 40 from Waco, 41 clean, 42 from Temple. The winds are out of the north. The humidity is at 100%. And three tenths of an inch of rain so far at Colleen, and you know that's going to go up. Half inch from Temple, a little over a half inch here at News 25. Forecast map looks this way for tomorrow. We're going to uh, start to clear things out as we go throughout the day, push the rain to the east. There may be a little bit around in the morning, but then skies will clear. Temperatures mid to upper 50s, maybe even a 60 or two tomorrow. Doesn't look real likely. And then here comes a cold front. For Friday, a few sprinkles around. What you will notice is that it's going to turn much cooler as we go into the weekend with a pretty good stiff north wind. 39 degrees as you step out the door in the morning. Again, 50-50 shot of rain. 50 by lunch, 56 tomorrow afternoon. Northwest winds at 8 to 18 miles per hour. And then it turns colder. There it is, 45 for Friday. Slight chance for a shower. Chilly weekend. And then it looks like a chance for rain coming up being part of next week. We have no warnings in effect at this time, but the storms out there tonight will have an improved likelihood of producing some hail and also perhaps some flooding rainfalls. We'll track it for you throughout the night. All right. Thanks, Andy. Well, skunks in Central Texas took this week's earlier-than-usual warm weather as a sign of springtime. Cameron Park Zoo curator Johnny Binder says the warmer-than-average temperatures lure skunks out for food and a chance to mate. But while skunks usually keep their distance, they can be dangerous because they are the primary carrier of rabies in Texas. Animal control officials say vaccinating your pet is extremely important. The state requires vaccinations for pets starting at three months old and every year after that. Some nurses in Louisiana Hospital have uh, been seeing double lately, <laughs> but there's no need to get their eyes checked. Uh, and in Illinois, an incredible story of survival for one very little lady. We'll explain when the night beat returns. Arlene Wilgamuth just hates when politicians waste your tax dollars. And you don't want to get Arlene Wilgamuth mad. In the legislature, she passed bills that eliminated seven state agencies, cut welfare spending, and saved taxpayers over a billion dollars. And she stood up to the powerful trial lawyers and won. Imagine how much wasteful spending she could cut out of the bloated budget in Washington. Arlene Wilgamuth, she's conservative, and she's tough. Hello, I'm Carol Weaver. A Michigan toddler escapes serious injury after a hit and run accident drags the child for more than a mile. The child's parents were pushing her in a stroller last night when all three were struck by a Jeep, killing the child's father and injuring her mother. The car then sped away, dragging the stroller. When police arrived, they found the child crying with only cuts on her face. Both the child and her mother are expected to make a full recovery. Police have arrested a suspect, but charges are still pending. A 33-year-old woman is arrested for posing as a 13-year-old boy. A Galena, Kansas pastor says the person he now knows to be a woman showed up at his church in October claiming to be an abused boy. But after a series of inconsistencies, he confronted her. Bertie Joe Hoax confessed to the lie and told him she was caring for three children. Hoax is suspected in similar scams in 15 other states. A tiny miracle is surprising many near Chicago at only 10.8 ounces. Zoe Coe's is the third smallest baby to survive in the U.S. When doctors discovered the mother wouldn't be able to bring her baby to full term, they performed an emergency cesarean section at just 27 weeks gestation. After more than three weeks of waiting, Zoe's parents finally got the chance to hold their tiny baby. Baby Zoe will remain hospitalized for several months, but the doctors and her parents are optimistic about her chances. Caring for one child is difficult to say the least, but caring for multiple sets of twins is more than a handful. That's what nurses at a Louisiana hospital are finding out in a hurry. In the 24-hour period, three moms, including this one here, gave birth to twins. In the neonatal intensive care unit, there are five more sets of twins and another set is on the way. The hospital's head nurse says she had to bring in extra staff to help care for the surge in babies. She says having this many twins at one time is highly unusual, but they're not complaining. It's a miracle every time. Must be something in the water. <laughs> I guess. Up next in sports, college basketball aplenty. Vince has the best plays from the 11th ranked Longhorns tilt with Colorado, plus both the MCC men's and women's clashes with Hill. As well as a result of melding the best high school Central Texas football players with the college of their choice. It's National Signing Day. The Wrap up when we come back. Everyone.
The 11th rate Longhorns against Colorado in the game in a nutshell here. Storehorn steal the inbounds pass, three on one. Nice pass to Jason Klotz as they rock Colorado's world 76 63 tonight. Everybody also tonight, the 18th ranked MCC Highlanders back on home hardwood against Hills Rebels. Mixed back for the Highlanders, Allen Houston, who pulls up with a 15 footer to pull them back within seven. Few series later, check this one out. Off the missed shot, Eric Dawson rebounds to Mr. Houston and Doink right off his back. Wasn't expecting it. Mikey Mitchell steals, drives in, and Houston fouls him plus one. It did not hurt them, though, as they came back to win this one 85 to 78. In the early game, the High Lassies in Hill. The High Lassies down a ton until Tanisha Barfield rebounded it, whipped it around to wake up product Bridget Brackens. She knows what to do, and they stormed back and took it 77. 66 tonight. Oh, and that other thing today. National Signing Day, where the best of the best high school footballers committed to the college of their choice. The complete rundown from News 25, Scott Reister. Signing Day is synonymous with Decision Day for the area's brightest athletes. Scouts have been drooling over Waco High standout cornerback Marcus Walker. He had already announced he was heading to OU, and after some last-minute doubts, he stuck with his gut. I'm real happy right now, man. I just, I'm so glad to get it all over with. This has been going on for over a year now. It has been kind of wearing me down for like a year, so I'm just ready to just go play football and just be free again. Five Lions and all signed today from Johnny Tusa's bunch. Joining Marcus Walker is Tory DeGray, the receiver headed to AM, Michael Ennis, Washita Baptist, Brandon Scott going to Sam Houston State, and offensive lineman Shelby Kaiser headed to Abilene Christian. McGregor's David Haynes Jr. is taking his all around game to SMU next year. Dad's proud. As a dad, you know, you always dream of your son going off playing a collegiate ball. I've been dreaming about this since I was in junior high playing football, and I think I've made the right decision for my parents to come watch. Another coach slash dad had a proud day today. Coppers Cove coach Jack Welch sends off his son, quarterback Josh, to UMHB next year. Josh, one of eight Bulldogs moving on. Lamar Duff, C.T. Drummond, Michael Hickey, Ryan Morgan, Anthony McDonald, Terrell Hamilton, and Jake Shooter all signed today. And perhaps the biggest signing of the day happened here in Belton, where Ramones Taylor let everyone know where he was going next year with one simple gesture. I always wanted to go to the Big 12 school and um, just have that be in Texas and close to home. For the third year in a row, China Springs sends someone to Division I. Defensive end Jeremiah Chapman signs with North Texas. Ray Simon of Connolly will play receiver at Washita Baptist next year. And La Vegas Eric Cross signed on with Tyler Junior College. Marlon Stars and buddies Red Richardson and Denarian Ryder signed with Arkansas today. Their teammate Germany Griffin signed with Hutchinson Junior College. Next year, Red and Denarian will be joined at Arkansas by university lineman Ryan Young. He'll be a Razorback. Other university signees are Eric Ransom and Stanley Willis, both headed to Trinity Valley, and Gerald Freeman and Carl Coleman going to UMHB. Now that the fun of signing day is over, reality sinks in. I just signed the next four to five years of my life away. Scott Reiser, News 25 Sports. Thank you, Scott. A couple of late ads. Uh, Gatesville All-Stater LaShawn Thayer signed with Hutchinson Kansas Junior College teammate Chris Fidel with Hardin Simmons. Okay, this week's Dodge Rodeo Report. The lowdown on the upcoming Bell County Livestock Show on Rodeo February 7th through 14th. There's the main events on the 13th. On a Friday, the first performance of the PRCA Rodeo at the Bell County Expo Center. On the 14th, on a Saturday, a Valentine's Day treat with the second performance there. Both of them start at 730. And that is this week's Dodge Rodeo Report. Busy day. Busy, busy day. All the way from 8 a.m. until now. I'm going to go home to sleep. Yeah. Okay, you and Scott both. <laughs> Thanks. When we come back, Andy has a last look at your forecast. Stay with us. If a relaxing moment turns into the right moment, will you be ready? Introducing Cialis, the first tablet for erectile dysfunction that gives you up to 36 hours to choose the moment that's right for you and your partner. New Cialis goes to work fast and can work for up to 36 hours. Cialis is not for everyone. If you take nitrates for chest pain or certain alpha blockers for prostate problems or high blood pressure, do not take Cialis. Such combinations could cause a sudden unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. The most common side effects were headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. Erections lasting longer than four hours, though rare, require immediate medical help. Discuss your health status with your doctor to ensure Cialis is right for you and you are healthy enough for sexual activity. 
Ask your doctor if a free sample of prescription Cialis is right for you. 36-hour Cialis. When the moment is right, will you be ready? Raising kids, eating right, spending smart, living well. We can help. Contact the Family and Consumer Sciences Educators, part of your Cooperative Extension Service. I'm Ted Koppel. Coming up on Nightline, the laws were supposed to protect children, but enforcement has been inconsistent and controversial tonight. Take a look at our severe thunderstorm watch, which is uh, in effect uh, for a good portion of central Texas tonight. Uh, includes Waco Temple, Colleen, uh, Georgetown, Gatesville, and then also the flash flood watch has been issued as well. Let's show you the storm tracker. This is where things are right now, basically. Uh, from very close to Waco, back toward uh, Temple and Belton and Killeen, and then just to the northwest of Georgetown. Movement on this is to the northeast at about 35 miles per hour. Heavier storms at this point are in northern portions of Bell County, north of uh, Waco, Temple, uh, and Belton, moving over toward Moody and uh, Eddy, and eventually up toward the Lorena area. We'll show you future scan. This is future radar going out over the next 30 minutes. And it looks like these storms start to move into McLennan County, so could, could get some strong thunderstorm activity, perhaps some hail, southern portions of Waco. Updates throughout the night. Nightline is coming up next. I need my home. 